Hey, we're recording now, people. Okay. Let's go to desktop again. You can see my screen again? Yes. yes. Okay. So the, the default is a teeny tiny one, or if you want no thumbnail, you click OK, and then you just have this picture of a brush there for each layer. Sorry, mm -hmm. folks, I, I can't work like that. Mm -hmm. I need big, really big. There we go. Okay, to make your, your layer, active layer show up as a different color, you go into your preferences. You can hit Command or Control K, which brings up preferences, or you can go to Photoshop, preferences and then start that way or on a pc i believe it's edit down to preferences on the bottom I haven't used a pc for a while so i'm not sure what it is and then interface you can change the color of your screen for color theme that's way too bright for me i'm sorry when i'm working this is the color I normally have. When I'm teaching at West Coast School, I'll bring it up in the brighter color so everybody can see it. And to the right of that, you have highlight color. You have default, which gives you this dark gray or lighter gray and a dark gray for the one that's not active, or you have blue. I like blue because it stands out a lot more so I know which layer is active when I'm working with it. So any questions on that one? I, I want mine to be pink. Sorry. <laughs> you're going to have to talk to um, Adobe about that one. And while you're at it, ask them to give me a color selection tool on the colorize because I just can't handle not being able to pick my color. And you notice that I moved my screen around and pulled it out. So I've got everything we can do this, uh, move this paragraph thing down to there, do my brush settings open. And we'll bring that over here, put that on top. And I've totally screwed up my, my desktop. I have it saved. So all I have to do is go to window, workspace, and then reset mics and everything goes back where it belongs i have a i have a question about that okay <laughs> i would like to make one big old long uh set of icons including my toolbar that just goes down the right hand side and the toolbar doesn't want to be um in with these other guys and so they have it ends up having two things next to each other um, and I don't know, I just don't know how to do it. The toolbar won't lock in yeah. to this because you can slide it over. Yeah, and but it, it won't, won't lock, lock in. in. Yeah. But you can, lock in. yeah, but you can set it there. Yeah, but then when you open it or close, then it's, it might get in the way or be covered up by the, the other thing. Yeah, page. so I just leave mine, oh. I leave mine over there. So okay. window workspace and back to reset mics. Once you have it where you like it, just go to Window Workspace, and we'll call this New Workspace, and we'll call it GCPPA. Include my keyboard shortcuts, include my menus, my toolbar, and save. So if I screw it up and do this again, and open up every window that's available in here, um, all I have to do is go back, workspace, and reset GCPPA, and it goes back to normal. And I am going to go back to mics. I have two mics set up right now. So, um, okay. Any questions on that one? Okay, then let's go to the next neural filter.
this is really cool. I have to do something first though. So let me go to bridge and let's do both of these. So what I did is I clicked on the first one, hold the shift key, click on the second one. So they're both selected, go up to tools, Photoshop, load files into Photoshop layers. Load files into Photoshop layers. And what that does, it now made two layers for me. I've got my white clouds and I've got my sunset clouds. I'm going to take my airplane and I'm just going to take the top layer there. So I hit V for move tool, drag it to the clouds, don't let go yet, and then hold it. I want to make it a little bit bigger. There we go. Now what I want to do, I'm going to turn that one off for now. You can see that this airplane does not match the color harmony of the background. I mean, it totally stands out. So let's go to filter, neural filters, harmonization, which is down on the second half under the beta and click on there. And then you select the layer that you want to harmonize it, harmonize it with. And I got to undo that. Hang on, let me escape out of there. Okay. Let's try that again. It didn't want to play. Neurofilter. Harmonize. Select layer. Okay, that's not the layer that I want. It's not showing me the sunrise layer. So we'll start with the other one first then, I guess. Hit cancel. Move that bad boy up there, see what that works. Every once in a while when you're trying to do things and do it right, it doesn't want to play with you. And harmonize is grayed out for some reason. And I don't know why. It's not liking this layer. So let's see. Well, your, your blue on the lower layer, maybe you need to be blue on the plain layer. You might be smarter than me. No. Yeah, you probably are. Now we have harmonization. Select layer. And it still does not recognize that layer. It only wants to go after that one. So let's cancel that, close that. I tried to take a shortcut, I guess, and it didn't like it. Select that one only. Did it shut it shut down Photoshop altogether? That explains a whole lot right there. Okay, we have clouds and we have the plane. Let's drag our plane up into the clouds. Ignore, ignore. Come on, don't mess with me now, I'm busy. <laughs> Command T, make it a little bit bigger. With the Command T or free transform, if you hold the option or Alt key, you'll see that it makes it bigger from this little point right there. And what you can do, move your point around and it makes it bigger from wherever that's at. You can also rotate it from wherever that's at as well. So if this is in 
the middle and I rotate it rotates on the middle. Oh, that'll work. Now, if everything works right, go to neural filters. Harmonization. Select layer. This is the layer we're going to harmonize with. And after a second or two of waiting and waiting, you see at the bottom down here, it has how far it's come along. And it's not going anywhere. Okay, now we have it. Now, if you look at before and after, before, really bright, after, it toned it down. And if you want to add a little bit of red to it to tint it a little bit more, you can do that as well. And it'll re reprocess it again. And it shouldn't be taking this long, but it is. There we go. And you can see before and after. It made the plane kind of match the sky a little bit better than what it was. Click okie dokie. Comes up on a new layer, the whole thing. And what you have is a plane by itself with the new coloring in it. And with the background there, you can see the lines of the previous layer. To get rid of those, all you have to do is mask it with the masking tool, paint it with black to conceal it. Hundred percent and it's painting white, go black. Okay, let's do this. We'll paint the black on that layer. There we go. And that gets rid of the little lines that you're not supposed to see when you do a composite. Any questions on that one? Nope. Okie dokie. It's pretty slick. Pretty slick. They're getting a lot of cool things in there, a lot of things to play with. And and this guy was just about an hour's worth of work to take the landing gear and the, everything out of there. Mm -hmm. And all the window stuff. And yeah, it was a little bit of a challenge, but it was fun. Don't save. Okay. Um, anybody that's updated to 2022 that has trouble saving a JPEG? I, don't um, I did it first, but I think I kind of figured it out. Okay. What you can do is, I think it's under file handling and preferences. In the middle on the top, it says enable legacy save as. Uh -huh. once, you, once you click on that, uh -huh. it goes back. It goes back to normal. Okay. Oh, that's good to know. That's been frustrating. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I can't tell you how much profanity there was in Idaho oh. when this came out. So you're it not the only ones that had to deal with it. Seems like the color picker has changed too. It's, it operates a little bit differently. But I'm I don't even know if I can explain what bothers me about it. Oh. Uh. Okay, we'd have to, we'll have to do a zoom and figure it out between us to make it happen. So, so you can show me. Um, let's go into an oldie but goodie. Let's go into uh, removing people. I have images from West Coast School from my class where we have people walking around. Oops, that don't count. But I'm going to show you how to get rid of that one anyway. So what I want to do is I want to open all this, this whole folder. So I'm going to hit Command A 
which selects all the images and then hit command and click or control and click on the White House to get rid of it or the, the Senate building to get rid of it, the Capitol. If I click on it, control or command click on it again, it brings it back, command or control click on it, it's gone. So I'm gonna to go to tools and bridge down to Photoshop, load files into Photoshop layers. It's gonna open them all into one file. And of course you're busy because you don't wanna play right now. <laughs> It always does that when you're putting on a program. I've worked on this for the last week doing this program and it hasn't been a problem. Today, it's being a problem. I'm gonna hold, click on the top layer, hold the shift key down, click on the bottom layer. That selects all my layers. What I wanna do is go to edit, auto align layers. Yes, this was shot on a tripod, but for some reason it's saying, they're not all perfectly aligned. So I'm gonna align them all. And you can see on the edges that they're not perfectly aligned because somebody was out of, out of order there. And at this point, I'm gonna to go to right click on here and convert to a smart object. So basically it puts them all into one layer makes it easy for me. Go to layer at the top. From layer, I'm gonna go down to smart object. Right here in the middle. They're already a smart object, so I don't have to convert them. Go down to stack mode to median. So I go layer to smart objects to stack mode to median. And if you want to screenshot that, you're more than welcome to. I'll hold it up there for another four seconds. Anybody need it longer? Going once, going twice? And you can see it took almost everything out, except right here, right here, and right here. It's almost, you can almost see a foot that it left in. <laughs> Some remnants here of a person and remnants there. What it's doing is taking all of the things there and saying, okay, which ones are not part of the permanent image? And it takes them out miraculously. So let me open this up and you can see as we go down, if you look where the spots are, you can see like there's the foot and it's a little bit there too because there was somebody in the spot more than once in the image. So what it did, where there's more than one person in the image or more than one spot, it will leave it in there. So how do you get rid of it? What you do is you hold the lasso tool, circle it, and you hit F3. Ah. It won't allow me to do it because it's a smart object. So what I'll do is I will go shift option command or shift alt control E, put a layer on top, maybe. Okay, we'll do a command J and Let's go ahead and rasterize that layer, gets rid of the smart object. Now I can circle that, hit F3, circle that, hit F3, circle that, F3, 
And what that does, I have an action that is called content aware fill. So when I hit F3, it expands by three pixels. It fills the selection with content aware and it deselects for me automatically. So if I do those two, F3. And if we have enough time, we'll make an action for you guys tonight. If you want to make it, if you don't want to make it, that's okay with me too. And that cleaned it up like fairly quick. So that saves me having to take out each person. And the trick to this, number one, be on a tripod. Number two, you want to wait 30 seconds to a minute between each shot. So when you're doing this, Photoshop's going to do all the work for you. Randy Van Dynen shows another way to do it where you go layer by layer and extract out of there. It works, but it takes a lot longer time. So this is very quick, very easy. Let me undo that. Command W, don't save. Go back in. We'll open all back up again in Photoshop layers. Photoshop says it's busy again. Select all my layers. We'll go to edit, auto align layers. And like I said, when I'm working, I have music going. So I got to make this weird music going. Mm -hmm. Okay. From here, what you can do is go to file to scripts. I might have screwed it up. Hang on. Statistics. Okay, let me cancel that. Let me go back out. Don't save. Let's go to file, scripts, statistics. I can never find statistics when it's there. We're going to browse, find our files. And we have been in... Remove peoples to command A, get rid of that one. Open. We got those. I forgot if I told it to do median or not. We'll find out. I did not. Do it one more time. File, scripts, statistics. This way, this way you guys get to see it over and over and over again. Median, you choose your median up there. Browse, command A, get rid of that one. Open, yep, that's what I like, perfect. And then down at the bottom says attempt to automatically align all layer sources, cool. We'll let it do all the work for us. And then you sit back, let it do the work. Either way, hopefully works about the same. I said, either way works about the same. And you can see you got your foot here, you got your shadow there, and you got your stuff back there. So it did it the same. Either way works just as good. Any questions on that one? Nope. Going once, going twice. Command W, don't save. Um, let's go to camera raw. This is fairly new, but it's not new. Um, Number one, I can right click on here and then I can go down to enhance. 
Okay, let me finish this real quick. Go down to enhance. And what it does is doubles the size of your image. And we have about one minute remaining on this. And we've got uh, 10 minutes to go, so we're good. Is it adding pixels? It's adding pixels and making it doubling the size of it. Nice. So it's making it a lot, lot bigger. And now you have the before and the after. And what I'm going to do is, that wasn't the reason I was going to show this. I was going to show you when I had a brand new camera, <laughs> you can see there's a few dust spots on there. I had not taken off the lens from the time I started the shoot to the time I finished it. Okay. On the right-hand side, you go down one, two, three spaces down here to spot removal and click on spot removal. And if you can't see the spots very well, you can click on Visualize Spots. And now you can see the spots very well. All you have to do is have a brush big enough to click on it. And hopefully you don't have this many. I don't have the D750 anymore. Well, this is the D850 that did this one. Yep, I know. One is brand new. I sent it, sent it in and have it clean, and they're saying this is the filthiest lens I have, or filthiest sensors I have seen. But you can see now how fast it cleaned it up. So that's in camera raw. You can also do that. We'll open it. And then you also have your camera raw filter. And you can do the same thing in the camera raw filter as well. Uh, hmm. So when you got dust spots, go in and clean them up. Okay, we're going to take a 30 second pause. <coughs> Let me stop recording again.